Passing gas, farting, flatulence, breaking wind, whatever you want to call it. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to talk about some causes of gas, when to see a doctor if you have gas, and then we're going to discuss lifestyle changes you can make and over-the-counter medicines you can take to relieve gas. Stay tuned. Greetings. This is Brandon E., your Farm D, and welcome to my YouTube channel. You know, all of us experience gas sometime throughout the day and throughout our lives, whether we're young or old, whether we're male or female, we all pass gas. So why do we pass gas? Why can't we just not do it? What are some causes of why we do pass gas? There are three main things that we can look to as to why we pass gas. Number one, swallowing air. Number two, certain medical conditions. And then finally, number three, the action of intestinal bacteria on undigested food. So first of all, let's talk about the first cause, swallowing air. There are many things that we do to swallow air. Many of the ones I'm gonna name we're probably not familiar with, such as drinking from a straw, chewing gum, smoking, having dentures that don't fit properly, eating too quickly, talking while we eat. All these things can cause us to swallow air. So it doesn't mean you can never do these things. The only thing I would name that I would never do is smoke. Smoking has no positive benefits. It can cause cardiovascular problems. It can affect some of our senses. It can increase all types of risk of cancer. So smoking, I would never smoke. So if you're having trouble stopping smoking, talk to your doctor or pharmacist and they give you strategies to stop smoking. And I'm actually going to do a video on ways to stop smoking. So stay tuned for that. But back to the subject at hand of gas, there are many things that we do to swallow air. So any of the above mentioned things, if you're doing them, you want to eliminate them or minimize them and see if that helps. Mm -hmm. The second thing that can cause gas is certain medical conditions like irritable bowel syndrome or celiac disease that we eat gluten, we can get gas. Or if you're lactose intolerant, which means you don't have the enzyme needed to break down lactose found in dairy products. And we'll discuss this more a little later. So now the third cause of gas that we're going to talk about, there's a direct correlation with certain foods that we eat in gas. If you eat certain foods like a lot of beans or vegetables like broccoli or cauliflower, certain fruits and certain dairy products or fatty foods or fried foods and fast foods, these can all cause gas. And so now the healthier options like the vegetables and the fruits, I will never tell anybody to not eat a healthy diet, but the unhealthy foods like the fast foods and the fried foods, I would eliminate or avoid those. And if you're not sure which foods are causing gas, you can do a food diary where you document the type of foods that you eat over like a week or two. And you can notice, hey, if I eat three servings of beans, I have this much gas per day, or if I eat this amount of fast food and I have a lot of gas. And if you notice that certain foods are causing you to be more gaseous, then you can minimize or avoid those foods. And as we know, I've talked about this in a video before on constipation, a lot of Americans are deficient in fiber. So if you're trying to live a healthier lifestyle and increase your fiber intake, which is a good thing, you wanna do so gradually and not all at once because Let's say, for example, you eat 10 grams of fiber per day and you say, hey, I'm going to eat 30 grams of fiber from here on out. And you just go from 10 to 30 in one day that can make you more gaseous because you're eating more fibrous foods like the beans and the vegetables that can increase how much gas you have. So what I would do is gradually increase If you're eating 10 grams of fiber, maybe go from 10 to 15, then maybe 15 to 20 gradually increase it because if you do it all at once that can cause a lot of gas and bloating and cramping and those type of issues so it doesn't mean you shouldn't eat healthy foods just maybe gradually increase them and as you gradually increase them your body will get adjusted to later so what are some signs when we should see a doctor if we have gas number one if you have gas with severe abdominal pain or if you have gas and then unexplained weight loss gas with blood in the stool, heartburn with gas, vomiting and gas, and then gas with diarrhea or constipation. If you have any of those symptoms with gas, you want to be seen by a primary care doctor or provider. You don't want to self-treat just to make sure there's nothing else. There's no underlying condition causing 
the gas and those other symptoms. So now we're going to talk about lifestyle changes that we can make to minimize or eliminate excess gas. Number one, it relates to certain foods that we just discussed. If you notice certain foods are causing you to be more gaseous and they're unhealthy, eliminate or minimize them from the body. If they're healthier foods like the beans and fruits and vegetables, gradually increase your intake of those so that you don't you know, just go from eating none to a bunch of servings in one day. Also, certain foods or certain beverages like soda and beer can cause excess gas as they release carbon dioxide into the digestive system. So let's say you like to drink a lot of sodas or you like carbonated water or seltzer water. Switch to fruit infused water or plain water and avoid the sodas. And again, as I mentioned earlier, all the things that we can do to swallow air, you want to minimize or avoid those things such as drinking from a straw, having loose fitting dentures, stop smoking and those type of things. Also, regular exercise could lower your chance of constipation, which could prevent the release of gas from the colon. So if you don't exercise regularly, try doing so. And exercise has a lot of good other benefits, such as can regulate our blood pressure, helps reduce stress, can help us get a good body weight. So try regular exercise. The last thing I'm going to talk about as it relates to lifestyle changes are there are these underwear that you can buy and they have activated charcoal. And so the underwear are lined with this charcoal. So let's say you're out in public and you're scared about having a lot of gas. The activated charcoal will actually neutralize the odor. So let's say you have to go to a particular event and you know you've been gaseous the past couple of days and you're worried about it. You can just go on Amazon and just type in activated charcoal underwear or gaseous underwear. And there'll be a laundry list of things coming up and, and they're all pretty good and pretty effective. So you can buy the underwear lined with activated charcoal. So now we're going to switch gears and we're going to talk about over the counter medicines that we can take if we have gas. We're going to talk about four main types of medicines. The first of which are lactase supplements. The second is simethicone. The third is alpha galactosidase. And then the fourth is activated charcoal. So first we're going to discuss lactase supplements. Lactase supplements are good if you're lactose intolerant and your gas is coming from the lactose intolerance. Lactase supplements supply us with the enzyme lactase. Lactase is an enzyme needed to break down lactose, which is the sugar found in dairy products like milk, butter, and cheese. Lactose is what's called the disaccharide, which means it's two sugars combined into one. So your body has to break down the disaccharide into two monosaccharides or the two smaller units. So if you don't have the enzyme lactase or you don't have enough of the enzyme lactase, you can't break down the sugar and dairy products. So as a result, you can get gas, bloating, diarrhea and those types of symptoms. So as a result, you should take a lactase containing tablet available over the counter. And there are many different types and they're all pretty effective. So one really isn't better than the other. One of the common brand names is Lactaid, but if there's a store equivalent like a CVS equivalent or a Walmart brand equivalent or whatever brand equivalent, it should work just as well. And you just take this lactase containing enzyme or lactase supplement over the counter at the first bite of the dairy meal, and then it will prevent you from having the gas and bloating and those types of symptoms. So number one are lactase supplements if your gas is coming from being lactose intolerant. The second type of anti-gas medicine we're gonna talk about is simethicone. And simethicone is the active ingredient found in a lot of gas products over the counter. One of the brand names you may see is GasX. And it's in other products as well as a combination product, but turn the label on the backside and in the active ingredients list, you'll see some methicone. And again, this is an anti-gas medicine and it's minimally absorbed in the body. It's pretty well tolerated. It works in minutes. And what it does is it breaks down bubbles in your stomach and your intestines. And once the gas is broken down, the body can deal with it naturally and eliminate it from the body. And again, it works in just a few minutes. It's very well tolerated. 
and it can cause some constipation, but generally it doesn't have a lot of side effects. So simethicone or gas sex, and this is used for treating gas if you have symptoms of gas. The next product we're going to talk about over the counter is alpha galactosidase. And this is a product, it's actually an enzyme and it's found in certain over the counter products like Beano. And what this medicine does is it's actually an enzyme again, and it's a naturally occurring product. And this is more for preventing gas. So if you're going to eat foods that you know are going to cause gas, such as certain complex carbohydrates like beans or vegetables, you can take this when you eat the food and it'll prevent you from having gas. And what this agent does, it helps us break down some of those complex carbohydrates found in certain vegetables and beans. And like I said earlier, in the lifestyle changes portion, you can do a food diary. So if you know you're going to eat certain foods that can cause gas, like, hey, I'm going to eat some beans, you can actually take the product, the alpha galactosidase with the beans, and it'll prevent you from having gas after you eat that particular product. So the third one is alpha galactosidase. And I didn't mention this earlier, but again, this is an enzyme. And what enzymes do is they speed up chemical reactions in the body. So like I mentioned, lactase is the enzyme used to break down lactose. And alpha galactosidase is the enzyme used to break down certain complex carbohydrates. So anytime you see, generally when you see ACE in a word, it's an enzyme and an enzyme helps to break something down or speed something up in the body. So the last over-the-counter product we're going to talk about is activated charcoal. And I mentioned it earlier and there's some underwear that you can buy with activated charcoal. And obviously you don't take this by mouth, but you wear the underwear and that can neutralize the gas. But there are also products you can take by mouth with activated charcoal, like charcoal caps. You can actually take this before and after a meal that you know may cause gas. And what it does is it traps gas in the gut and then removes it from the gut. And with activated charcoal, you want to make sure you separate it at least a couple hours if you're on any other medicines. You don't want to take it at the same time as other medicines because it could bind to some of the medicines and render them ineffective in the body. There have also been some reports that activated charcoal may darken the stool. So again, activated charcoal, you can take it before and after a meal to help treat gas and it can darken the stool and you want to make sure you separate it from other medicines by at least two hours before or after. So now let's put everything together. Let's say we're having problems with gas or we want to prevent gas. What should we do? Number one, you want to try to do the lifestyle changes that we talked about to minimize getting gas in the first place. If we're doing things to swallow air, you want to decrease some of those things like avoid drinking from a straw, minimize chewing gum. If you smoke, stop smoking. If your dentures don't fit right, make sure they fit properly. We want to do all of these things. And then we also want to look at our diet. We can do a food diary. And if we're noticing we're eating unhealthy foods and they're causing us to have gas like fried or fatty foods, then you want to minimize or eliminate those from the diet. And then also if we're eating healthy foods that are causing us to have gas, you want to gradually increase those and don't just increase your assumption of healthy foods all at once. You want to increase your fiber gradually over a week or two, and that'll help minimize you from getting gas and as your body adjusts to the new diet. And another option, again, are the underwear line with activated charcoal. If you know you're going to be out in a particular area or you're at an event and you've been having gas and you're scared about having people smell you you can buy some of the underwear with activated charcoal and this will neutralize some of the odor from the gas so let's say you do these things and you're still having gas again you can go to the over-the-counter products if you're lactose intolerant i would take a lactase containing enzyme supplement at the first bite of a meal with dairy in it and then if you're having gas not related to lactose intolerance and you want to treat it you can take a simethicone product like gas sex and it'll work in a couple of minutes. And if you're eating foods that are causing gas, you can also take the Beano um, over-the-counter supplement or alpha galactosidase, and that will help to prevent you from getting gaseous symptoms. And then finally, there's activated charcoal. I would probably go with simethicone first. I think that may work a little better and is better tolerated, less side effects and interactions. 
And then if that doesn't work, then take the activated charcoal second. Or you could do the activated charcoal underwear and then take a semethicone by mouth. But also remember, if you're having some of these severe symptoms like severe abdominal pain or gas with heartburn or gas with unexplained weight loss, you want to be seen by your primary care provider. You don't want to self-treat. So this was a video on gas. Let me know in the comments if you like the video. And I want to give a special shout out to all my subscribers. All of you are awesome and amazing. And you all care about taking your health to the next level. So kudos to you. Stay tuned for the next video. And again, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer. This is Brandon E., your Farm D. Remember to drink water and hope this video helps.